good evening guys uh, so um, I have just actually finished off with the video number 137 and uh, so there I actually uh, provided a solution to one of my subscribers Barbara where she has written that she is looking for the dynamic drop downs right so this excel sheet what we did is this is what exactly we did if I change the company then drop down should automatically change you know if I select EY then this drop down should have the cities uh, located in these you know addresses which if which is like phase 4 6 7 and uh, you know uh, 55 and if I change this to Deloitte then this should be sector 1 to 4 right so if you haven't watched this video then watch this video video number 137 uh, so again I'm going to uh, you know provide uh, a solution but in a different manner right so this is the video number 138 and in this video number uh, 138 again we will do the same stuff but with uh, you know a different technique so we are here actually to create these kind of dynamic drop downs so that if I change any uh, uh, company here now these are the one my company list so this technique which we have used you you can watch as I said in that video number 137 and you'll see that what exactly we did so this is a kind of a stuff which we want to do if I change if I select a on then this drop down should automatically change right so again uh, now previously in my previous video we did this with the data validation but this time we'll do this with the ActiveX controls right so will use this ActiveX controls now what does that mean L let, let me tell you exactly what exactly it means so go to your this uh, you know uh, the tab uh, developer if it is not available in your window just go to the file I am using now Excel uh, 2010 so go to the file option and uh, you can go to this customized ribbon and ensure that this developer tab is on right if it is not on then you will not see it so just keep a check mark on that if you are using uh, Excel 2007 then I believe that it is somewhere here in the general of the popular or the proofing somewhere here it is written uh, developer tab so you need to check mark that so go and find find out that and uh, I'm not sure where, where it exactly it is in 2013 or maybe the recent which they have launched 2016 but you the purpose of doing this to on the developer tab so that we can actually go in this insert uh, you know tag and here you see that we have the form controls we have the ActiveX controls so let's um, use this um, form controls uh, so I'll go to the form control so we'll try to do this with the form form controls so do you can also prepare a lot of uh, forms using the VBA but this time uh, we'll be using it like you know uh, just um, using this ribbon we will not actually use the VBA uh, this is what exactly we try let's see how it goes so first I need now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a combo box just click on the combo box and drag this so this is how the combo box will be created uh, we need to resize this and I need to of course reduce the size so I think this looks nice right so in this combo box what I want is that whenever I click I should have those companies listed right so I'm going to copy this all the companies back here let me just copy it and uh, I'll paste it here somewhere here right and then in this combo box just right click and go to the format control so what we are doing is we are actually using the form controls input range what is my input range so my input range is these companies I'll select this entire table right and if I have to select any cell link uh, let's keep it blank for now let's see how it goes but let's just uh, use only the input range and now you can see that you have all the companies listed in this combo box and we haven't used any VBA right it is but it looks very nice like as if some code is co code is you know developed but it's not actually you see you saw that now the next thing which I want is so when you are saying here select the company so let's say let's just write here select company or maybe you can create a kind of uh, you know shape over here let's say uh, anything I mean you can write whatever you want to write or maybe you can uh, give a kind of an arrow let's say this one 
Now this is a more of a formatting piece which of course I will not discuss but you know you can build some sort of this stuff and you can see that select company right and then you can give whatever the color you want to give this to uh, to make it look beautiful right so this is how uh, we have developed this now a user will select the company now what we want is uh, the moment it selects the company uh, you know the area located where that company is located that's that address should populate so I'm going to use this list so let me just copy this and paste it in this sheet as well in previous sheet we used it uh, you know when we actually were doing it uh, through the advanced Excel skills using the indirect function and name range or uh, go and watch that video will come to know so this time we're using the different technique which is called the form control so this is my table as you can see that I have written all the uh, areas under Deloitte and Aon then EY and then Merck right so this is where we have these companies located now how to uh, what to do now I mean what exactly you want to do how creative you can so I would say that again go to the developer and let's create this time a list box right so that I can see all the companies according to this uh, combo box the changes in the combo box so create this list box and there you go so these are also used uh, you know many times in your dashboards as well uh, if you haven't watched my uh, the series on the dashboards art of making dashboards please go and watch that you will get the better understanding uh, you can watch that through my play, uh, playlist this is my channel there we have um, you know I have already uploaded 100 and around 38 39 videos for you so these are all the videos as per the you know category VBA videos conditional formatting VBA arrays loops indirect VLOOKUP so you know all the videos you will see here so similarly uh, we have a video called dashboard making you can go there and check in case if you want to go to the website you can go to this excel vba lover .com and on the tutorial section under this excel training video tutorial when you click you will be on this page and there you can see that art of making dashboard is available let me just show you where it is there you go dashboard making so I have uploaded around uh, five videos on the same uh, starting from the scratch so series one series two and go in that sequence and you'll understand right so anyways let's come back to uh, this uh, objective which we want to achieve now I want that whenever I should do some changes here this list box we call this a list box this should auto populate these addresses right so how what exactly you need to do now so it's quite simple actually now I'm going to use the offset function here in case if you don't know the offset function then I would say this may be uh, you know a video a little difficult for you but at least you can get an idea that how powerful the offset function can be and then you can later you know google it or maybe you can watch uh, some videos on that however I haven't uploaded so far any video uh, specifically on the offset but it's a great function it is not only used in VBA but even in the dashboards we use it a lot so I'm going to give you a very good example of the offset function today which we are going to use here now see uh, now offset actually with the offset uh, I will create a list which will reflect here so whatever I will select here in this uh, combo box that list will this list will actually appear here so let me just color it so that we can keep a control where exactly we are going to you know what we exactly going to publish so now here what I will do is I'll go here right click format control and selling this is how you play with these uh, activex controls or form controls right so selling means any cell you want to link with this so let's say I'm gonna link this with this F1 see what will happen now you see that Aon stands at the second position if I press Deloitte this will F1 will be 1 so this is exactly telling me the position and with the help of these positions we can do wonders right so now what I will do is in this table I try to find the position of this company which I have selected here Merck using the offset function so this is what exactly I'm going to do offset what is my reference reference means what is your starting point so I say that my starting point is uh, let's say um, this one or maybe this one let's say L1 starting from the L1 how many rows I need to go uh, down or maybe up right so uh, I will say that uh, I will like to actually uh, cover let's say uh, 
six rows because I have here one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So I'll say that I need to cover the five rows, right? Uh, before that, uh, let me just uh, not the five rows, but exactly where I exactly want to reach. So I want to reach to Merck, which is here. So starting from here, zero, one, two, three, four. I need to have move four columns and I need to be on the same row, which is the same row means from where I'm starting. So I'll write here zero. It starts with the zero. Remember, so zero means that I will be on the same row from where I'm starting, which is my first row. And how many columns I need to move? As I said, it starts with the zero, one, two, three, four. So I'll say four. So the moment I do that, if I press enter C, I will get the mark, which I do not want actually, right? I do not want because I mark is already selected here. I want Avenue two. So Avenue two, how will it come? Only when I say that, you know, move the four columns from here, keeping this as zero and one row down, which means zero and one. So it will be on this row. Now, if I press enter, you see that I will get, get the Avenue two. Similarly, you need to again, uh, drag this function but before dragging it what we need to do is we should always be on the fourth column right so instead of this uh, writing here four i will refer to this cell f1 and i'll freeze this because f4 actually this f1 will change according to the position in this table right how many columns i am actually going to move from this l1 this will be decided by this drop down so right now Merck is on the fourth starting from here one two three four so that's why i'm able to reach to the mark and i'm saying that i need to move one row down right so this is how i can actually get this avenue two now the next thing is in order to get avenue three again from this point let me just color this i need to move how many rows zero one two and then similarly to uh, get avenue 66 i need to move how many rows zero one two three so that means my row actually is increasing by one every time. So I, there are a number of ways of doing it. I think the best way is simply write the row function here. Row function will return what? Row function will return 12 and I want one. So I'll subtract 11 from it and I press enter and now we'll drag this and see what will happen. L1 should always be your starting point. So just completely freeze this. Otherwise we will not be able to get this kind of a table. Right, so let me just uh, drag this and paste it here. Now you can see that I'm getting all the values, right? So this zero will we will uh, eliminate this little later. But first of all, understand what is happening. If I change this to a on now, see what is happening. Wonderful! It looks so elegant, so nice. How powerful these functions are, right? So this is what exactly I teach even in my advanced Excel trainings. So the moment you change this to uh, Deloitte, it keeps on changing. Now let me again tell you what exactly is happening because I'm sure many of you will not be able to understand what is happening. So see, what we are doing is we are saying uh, this offset function is actually used uh, to get to reach out to some destination, to reach out to a per some cell which we want. In this case, we want to reach out to Avenue 2, Avenue 3, Avenue 66, depending upon what we have selected here. So if we have a Deloitte here, then you see that this form, this link is giving me one. One means that the column is one. So starting from L1, Z, which is zero, my column is going to be one. And after I reach to the Deloitte, I exactly want sector one, two, four, which means I need to go one row down and then two row and then three row. So this is what I have done. Uh, this row function, what it does, row function actually returns the row of a cell where you are actually writing that formula, right? So this is what I was getting in order to convert this into one, two, three. What I did is I simply subtracted 11 from it because 11 rows are above it and if i subtract this it will be changed to one and similarly if i drag this because one is a constant 12 is a constant and i once you subtract uh, this from 11 sorry not 12 uh, if you subtract 11 from this then you will get one if you subtract again 11 then you'll get two and if you again subtract 11 then you know this keep on changing so this is what exactly i have used here and this row minus 11 right Another way of doing it, you can even, uh, if you don't want to do that, you can even simply uh, write here like uh, one and then you can increment this by one. And you can keep this as one, two, three, four. And instead of writing this, you can even use this function. 
simple address you'll get the same output the idea is to get this one two three four five six so I thought row is a good function because then I don't have to use any helper column for that and being an advanced Excel person I always avoid using the helper columns they are always welcome you always need to use them wherever it is required but not where you exactly you know can actually even uh, uh, you know uh, carry out your work without using them so not um, I mean you should avoid in the first attempt so now this is what we are exactly now getting uh, so if I have a zero output then I would say that if my this function is equals to zero then I should get what I should get space otherwise whatever the value I have so I can use the if function in order to avoid my zero so now just copy this and drag this formula and this is what you will get now right so whatever the company you will select now you see that you have all the numbers populated this works very wonderful right so now how to get this in this list box is quite simple click on this right click and go to this format control and input range what is your input range so my input range will always be this yellow one which I have selected so I can keep this range till this point you don't have to use cell link as we used in the combo box because we don't require it there you go look at this now everything you can hide and this is how your drop down is created very nice right so this is what I have said actually in my previous video where we have done this kind of a stuff same stuff but with a different approach so go and watch that video as well right so I thought why not to go ahead and you know give you another solution because I am actually quite now you know bored of with using this technique I have been using it a lot trust me <laughs> but then I thought uh, let's go ahead and try to give you something you know which you may have not even imagined in Excel right so uh, this is how we have used the form controls and uh, so what we did is uh, let me just summarize this uh, first of all you we created a table where we have kept all these uh, cities together uh, companies together and then underneath that we have created their addresses and uh, then we created a combo box using this ActiveX uh, sorry the form control we click on this combo box and the combo box appeared and then we went to this format control right click and then we said that this is what exactly we want we have selected this range and cell link is F1 so F1 will give us the ranking whatever I will select the position will be returned to F1 if I select Aon I will get the 2 and there then what exactly I am doing is I am using the offset so offset is telling me that my starting point is here you can see that this is my L1 point so L1 means my journey will start from the L1 reference right so if I'm on the L1 and uh, if I am selecting Aon then that means I need to go to the second column so which means this is my zero column one two so once I will be in the Aon obviously I would like to get these numbers not the Aon itself so that's why in order to reach to 6 to 55 how many rows I need to go down zero one and how many columns zero one two so two columns and one row and this is what exactly we are doing here right offset H12 which is telling me how many rows I need to go down which is one and then how many columns this is I have linked up with this two and then frozen it so that this two should remain as it is it should not move in the downward direction so this is what exactly we did and this is how you can actually create a combination of list box and a combo box right so I hope uh, you enjoyed this tip and uh, now I'll uh, come up with some another exciting stuff till then just be a part of my channel and if you haven't watched the other videos go and watch the videos because there are like 138 videos on the Excel and the VBA you can again go to my playlist or maybe on website and you can see, see all the videos according to the category thank you so much for being with me and uh, with again the same promise that I'll come up with some more exciting stuff to make you awesome in Excel right now I'm just signing off and take care bye bye happy learning